What's up everybody? Gabby here from Gabby's Garden and this is Creature Feature Episode 2. If you saw episode one, you know about our little nostalgic game that we're gonna be playing with every episode. So without further ado, who's that creature? When I first came across this little insect, I thought it might be a type of beetle. I had never seen it before, and I thought its coloration and design were absolutely beautiful. It was just such a pretty insect. I loved the symmetrical lines and blocks of color in brown, tans, creams, and pink. And its little dark feet made it look like it was wearing shoes. <laughs> I had no clue what it was, but I decided that I really liked this little insect. Turns out it was a stink bug. I just want to take a moment to ponder something with you. I liked that little beetle looking insect when I discovered it. I thought it was cute and really pretty, but when I found out what it was, I kind of felt less enthusiastic about it and almost a little disappointed that it was just such a bleh bug and not something like really cool and interesting. Isn't it funny what stereotypes can do to your opinion of something? Just a thought. Anyway, stink bugs are shield-shaped insects. Like bees, they have three body parts, a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. They have six legs, four wings, and mouth parts that pierce and suck plant juices. Stink bugs earn their name by having the ability to secrete a bad smelling fluid from pores on the sides of their bodies. This is a defense mechanism against predators, as the smelly fluid also apparently tastes pretty bad. Hey, no judgments here. We're all a little bit stinky every now and again. Still, stink bugs commonly fall prey to birds and spiders and even other predatory stink bugs. The metamorphosis of a stink bug is broken into three life stages. The egg, the nymph, in the adult. In early June, I found a cluster of eggs on the twine of last year's plant support. And at first, I didn't have a clue what species these eggs belonged to. Most of them were open and vacated already, but a couple looked to still be inhabited. That's when I noticed some movement on the twine and saw a very small version of the insect that I had seen just a few days before and really liked. I'm not sure if in the video you can tell just how tiny these eggs or this little guy were, but it was hard for me to see the recently hashed nymph until I was hovering pretty close to the cluster of eggs. Think of their nymph stage like their childhood, in a way. There are a bunch of different species of stink bugs throughout the world. They have varying degrees of vibrant colors and elaborate designs. The ones I'm showing in today's video are my encounters in the garden. As I said earlier, I really liked the nymph stage of this insect and I found them in different size and color design combinations. Likely a couple different species, but I did have a hard time identifying some of them and I'm still not completely sure on the species actually. Nymphs are wingless and go through five stages of development called instars. Each instar takes about a week, but it varies from insect to insect. As they progress through each of the five instars, they will grow in size and change in color and design, eventually developing into a full grown brown and green adult that you may be familiar with. Stink bugs are easily identifiable by the large triangular scutellum on their thorax. It's this triangle that you see right here. Editing Gabby here and it is actually pronounced scutellum. Apparently all insects have scutellums, scutellum, just not as prominent as the stink bug. At this final stage their wings are fully developed so they're capable of flying and they're also capable of reproduction. Here we have this lovely couple that decided to get a room at Hotel Birdhouse. This is when stink bugs can become especially damaging pests. 
Stink bugs use their piercing mouth parts and suck all the juices out of plants. Meaning, if they are in your garden, they might find your veggies and cause some damage. If an infestation takes hold, it could seriously reduce your harvests and the quality of your harvests. Now, I don't have a desire to kill insects. If you've seen my other videos, you know my stance when it comes to using pesticides. But if an infestation of stink bugs ever took hold in my garden, you better believe I'd be out there taking care of the issue with a bucket of soapy water. We've done it before with a striped cucumber beetle infestation that would have otherwise killed all of our squash and zucchini plants. Sometimes you just have to take matters into your own hands or you can lose your plants. My choice of pest control in that situation targeted the specific problem pest that was causing damage to my plants. Whereas something like a broad application of a pesticide would harm any creature that came in contact with it. So far, nature has been pretty good about keeping itself balanced out. We have not had any type of stink bug infestation in the garden. We did have some stink bug and aphid damage on a handful of our sugar snap peas, but the damage was actually pretty minimal and we got a nice steady flow of perfect pea harvests. Enough that they became part of our regular daily diet for several yeah. weeks. Ugh. Heck yeah! Eating fresh homegrown food daily really makes a difference in your life. If you happen to see a stink bug in your garden, look at its characteristics before you do anything like killing or relocating it. Some species of stink bugs actually do not feed on your plants. Instead, they are predatory and feed on other pests in the garden. Take the spined soldier bug, for example. This beneficial insect has pointed shoulders that look like little thorns almost. Its diet helps control the population of moth caterpillars and beetle larvae. I've seen one out in the garden before, but unfortunately I didn't have my phone with me at the time, so I didn't get any footage of it. One last noteworthy thing about stink bugs is that they love seeking shelter in your home in the winter time. You may start to notice that more and more stink bugs have found their way into your living space through windows and doors and little cracks and crevices around your home. I had a little friend crawling on me. <laughs> we notice them in our family room all the time, walking around the edges of the ceiling. And it's just a habit now to go and capture them with a little glass jar and release them right out into the yard. Along with their ability to emit the smelly odor that gives them their name, stink bugs are also capable of emitting a pheromone that acts as a signal to other stink bugs that they have found a safe place to hibernate. This scent is undetectable to humans, but it acts as an invitation to other stink bugs looking for a safe winter hiding spot. Insects are resourceful little creatures that will pretty much always find a way into nice warm homes during colder months. Locating and sealing potential routes indoors is a good way to prevent many insects from entering your home. If you do find stink bugs inside your home this fall or winter, you can sigh a little breath of relief. During their hibernation period, they enter a state called diapause, in which they do not feed or reproduce. So never fear, <laughs> your house plants are safe and you do not need to worry about them laying eggs in your home. They aren't even capable of reproducing until the warmer spring months when they will go and find their way back outdoors. That's what I have today on stink bugs. If I missed anything, please let me know down in the comments below. As I said in the first creature feature episode, we're all pretty much learning this together. And I am absolutely loving going through all of the creature footage I took this summer 
and putting together these educational episodes. I have some seriously cool creatures filmed for future episodes, and I'm really excited to share it with you. If only the videos edited themselves and the research presented itself already organized. Am I right? You know what time it is. Who's that creature? Let me know your guesses in the comments for next episode's creature feature. Don't forget to hit that like button. And if you aren't already, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I hope you have an amazing day. And as always, happy gardening. See ya.